welcome back. It's Smashbox here. And as you can probably see in this video, we are going to talk about the Carl Nodon. However, what you might not be able to see is that the car is actually not controlled by me. So I'm not pressing any buttons on my controller. This car is completely AI controlled and it will find the way around the track on its own. So you might be thinking that this sounds really complicated and is definitely hard to make. However, the AI of this car uses only seven nodons. And as you can see, even though it's not perfect, it works quite well. So let's take a look at the project. Down here is not more than the track itself and the car, of course. And as you can see, also the rest of the nodons is this time really not that much. So here we have a camera nodon, which is just instead of using a game screen, I this time used the camera, connected it to the car so that it will follow the car and put it slightly behind and above the car. So then there's, as I said, only seven nodons that control the movement of the car, the acceleration of the car, is just a simple constant nodon of 0 0.2. So it will drive forward all the time. It will not stop or go back. And all I really needed for this very basic AI approach is three touch sensors, one on the front of the car, one on the left side, and one on the right side. So you can imagine that basically once the game starts, they are all connected to the car. So they will teleport to the right, to the left, and to the front of the car. And the AI that is actually applied in order to make the car move is also super simple. All I'm basically saying is that as long as there is no wall inside the range of this sensor, which is the one on the front, we don't do anything. And if there is a wall, then this input is gonna be one. So this will just make sure that instead of having a zero, which will also result in a zero here, there's actually some information going through. So this one goes into the steering wheel. And basically all I'm saying is that if there is a wall in the range of this sensor, then I want to drive around the other way. So if there is a wall right here, then I want to move to the left. And if there's a wall on the left of the car, then I want to move to the right. So I'm just taking this output of this sensor and adding it together with the output of the other sensor. So in the example that I showcased right here, this worked really well. However, the AI is just really basic. So there's definitely some things to consider. For instance, if I have a wall on the left and on the right, the car does not know what to do. So for example, if the car would drive along this way, it would get stuck in the corner because the sensor on the left would hit this wall and the sensor on the right would hit this wall, so it wouldn't go in any direction. Also, 
if none of these sensors hit any wall, the car will also not go in any direction. And here we can see this in practice. If I let the car start from here, as long as there's no wall in the front, it will not do anything. But once there is a wall in the front, none of the sensors on the side go far enough to hit any wall because if the car is down here, for example, then you can see the sensor on the front will definitely recognize this wall. However, the one on the right doesn't reach that wall right here and the one on the left also doesn't reach any walls. So the car will just drive against the wall forever. But as I said, for a really basic AI, it actually works pretty well most of the time. So you could also make a different AI with a different approach. And that would be to make an AI that only works on the track that it's driving on, like a time-based AI that just knows there is a curve to the left. So after a certain time, it knows now I need to go left. However, there's two problems with that. First of all, as soon as you make the slightest change to the layout of the course, you always need to adjust the AI too. And second of all, if there is a player controlled car that bonks into the car that is controlled by the AI, it's off of its normal path. So then what it would normally do might not make sense anymore. So let's say you have a time-based AI that says drive forward for whatever, like three seconds and then turn left. And now in the actual game, you have also a car that is controlled by the player. So the player first goes in front of this car and stops it from moving. So after three seconds, it's not in its expected place where it can turn left, but maybe only here. So then if it will turn left, it will hit this wall. And basically from there on, the entire AI that you set up doesn't work anymore. However, this approach right here just looks around at the course and makes decisions based on the layout of the course. So no matter how you change the course, it will work most of the time. As I showed you before, not every time there are certain scenarios where this simple AI can still get tracked. So as you can see here, I've now changed the course layout a little bit. I've also included a little shortcut, which of course the AI will not find, but just so that there's a little bit of a different course layout and the AI itself is still unchanged. So it's exactly the same as before. So now let's see if the AI will still find its way around the course. As I said, since the AI will only do something if there is a wall in the front, it will not find shortcuts like the one that I just created. But as you can see, it still finds its way around the course. So it's definitely way faster and easier to build an AI like this instead of making a time-based one that you have to adjust each time you change the course layout just a little bit. And it might not be perfect, but it will work most of the time. So definitely a solid approach. So that's it for today. And I hope you enjoyed the video.